Hello my pretties, the witch is back. The witch is back. Welcome back to what is now, I guess, an official deity series. Today we're going to be talking about Nyx. Nyx, the Greek version? Nyx. English? Nyx. So, I mean, whatever drives your dark chariot. Nyx is a child of Chaos, the first of the primordial gods, and Faunus, the primordial god of creation. These are all the embodiment of the world's elemental and physical forces. These primordial deities arrived close to the beginning of time before any of the other deities. Before there was anything, there was night, and Nyx, or Nyx, I gotta pick one for this video. Nyx is the personification or deity of night. Nyx marries Erebus, the god of darkness. They are very similar. Some also say that Nyx is the goddess of darkness, but um, little, little bit of distinction, I guess, and also probably why they make a fabulous and very romantic couple. Together, they created Aether, Aether, light, and Himera, which is day. And from her own body, Nyx created a number of children, including sleep, strife, death, pain, the fates. Busy woman. She is often depicted with wings or riding a dark chariot led by horses, oftentimes depicted with a veil of darkness flowing behind her. She resides in the deepest part of the underworld, and she actually sort of resides there with her daughter, Himera, Day. However, they cannot be there in the deepest part, this Tartarus part of the underworld at the same time. So when one leaves, the other arrives because night and day cannot be in the same room together, which is sad because they're family. So Nyx is sometimes considered dark or sinister or villainous even, but really she is pretty neutral. What is really feared about her is just her sheer power over things like light and sleep and death, but she's never recorded to be particularly malevolent with these powers. That said, she is so powerful that she is the only goddess that Zeus, king of the gods, has ever feared. Had some beef with one of Nyx's kids, and Zeus was like, we don't want to piss her off. I would not want to risk potentially evoking the maternal rage of the goddess of night either, so... I get it. When I started doing some more deep diving and research on Nyx, I found it really interesting that there is not really any documentation of worship as far as like temples go from ancient Greece. There are um, stories and poetry that refer to her, and there are statues of night that exist in other temples to deities such as Artemis or Hecate. So the gods or goddesses that would be related to the primordial gods, um, the ones that did have temples, they might have a uh, representation of Nyx there. I also found some reference of people sacrificing like black bulls for her, but I feel like that was pretty common for like a lot of them. They're like, oh, black bulls or like goats sacrifice. Um, so I don't think that that's very specific to Nyx. So without a lot of historical representation of how people would worship or honor Nyx or uh, no Orphic hymns or anything for us to work off of, there is a lot of flexibility and freedom for modern day practitioners that want to work with her or honor her. From what I've seen, she is much more uh, recognized and worked with in modern day paganism. And like a lot of other aspects of modern day paganism, what is going to work for you is going to be UPG or unverified personal gnosis. So I highly encourage you to just go with what speaks to you on this, but I will go through some ideas that I personally have that I would love to have on my own personal Nyx altar. I'm going to start with mostly uh, dark colored crystals because she is night. Onyx, obsidian, black tourmaline, uh, snowflake obsidian would be great because it's got the little white specks in it so it could be like the night sky. In line with that, uh, moonstone or maybe even selenite would be a good celestial representation. Plants that I would consider for Nyx would be uh, uh, moon blooming plants like moonflower. There are tons of like articles out there on uh, moon gardens because there are plants that kind of thrive in 
the nighttime rather than in the day, or maybe ones that are associated with sleep or meditation like lavender or mugwort, black candles, space or star themed things. Her chariot is sometimes depicted as being led by horses, horse symbolism. If you are truly dedicated to NYX, I think it would be really cool to get that blackest black paint, the one that looks like a void when you're looking at it, and paint something with that to put on your uh, NYX altar since it is true night it is darkness maybe you get a little toy horse and paint it with the blackest black it is interesting to me how these primordial gods these ones that are kind of these cosmic forces right they're big picture they're night they're darkness they are the the gods of creation they are time um these gods don't seem to be uh as acknowledged as some of the other ones are at least in terms of having temples having uh, hymns having worship nyx in particular i mean if she was so feared and she was considered almost to be uh you know evil or sinister in some way because of how powerful and how dark the night is the fact that there's not really much you know people trying to appease her historically that we can see is just fascinating to me and i'm really pleased to see some modern practitioners acknowledging or honoring them because there's also less historical worship of her there's also uh less information on working with her except for from each practitioner's personal experience. In the past, we've talked about Hecate, we've talked about Persephone, we've talked about how they might find you, who might be good to work with them, and why, where people might be coming from. And with Nyx, I mean, she is a cosmic force, goddess of night, creator of so many different gods, so many different things that she really could be a very versatile uh, thing to honor. A lot of times, a lot of practices around gods or deities really focus on sun gods because that was so important for our agriculture. Anytime there was extended periods of darkness like winter time or, uh, you know, eclipses, the sun gods turning their backs on us, uh, it was feared. But acknowledging that night created day, that we need both of those things, um, honoring that, respecting that, I think is a beautiful idea. It's kind of like uh, honoring that with life comes death, you know, even though we don't really want to be like, yay, death. We kind of have to like honor and respect it and acknowledge that it is it is a part of it. And if you want to celebrate the night, uh, having an altar or working with Nyx could be a wonderful way to do it. This video was a request from my comments. So if you would like to request a deity for a future deity series, I believe next time also by request I will be doing Athena, but if you would like to request another one uh, for a future video, please leave them in the comments because they will actually probably become a video at some point in time. If you are making your own altar or if you are working with NYX, I would love to hear about it. I would love to hear uh, any insight that you might have. If you found this video interesting or useful, please consider liking or subscribing if you haven't already because it lets me know I'm doing a good job. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!